Welcome, welcome, welcome to this solstice satsang. With all of my heart, welcome. Gently close your eyes. And to my helper, I will watch the admittance of people so you can close your eyes as well. So sit please with a long spine free from strain. So I know that sounds like a paradox, a long spine free from strain. What that looks like and feels like is your head, your neck, and your trunk in a long line. If you are in a chair, have both feet flat on the floor. Feel the points of contact of your body with the seat. And your seat actually connected all the way down through object to object with the earth itself. The earth is not simply a manufactured object. It is a living field of consciousness, very much alive and dynamic. Through this alignment, let yourself be nourished. So you're feeling the points of contact of your body with the seat and your seat with the earth. You don't need to describe these points of contact, just keep orienting to feeling. You can feel also the points of contact of clothing, touching skin, the points of contact of air touching exposed skin. Feel this. Body sensations are always in the now moment. By attending to them, the felt sensation, ordinary mind settles down and awareness comes into the foreground. You are the awareness behind all thought. You are the awareness prior to all body sensations. Have the feeling that you're receiving the breath rather than taking the breath. What does that feel like, receiving the breath? The universe itself is breathing your body. Freshly bring a portion of your awareness to the soles of your feet and with your imagination, deeply and continuously softening the soles of your feet like you're opening imaginary fists with your mind. If your hand was closed into a tight fist and you open it, you imagine that feeling moving throughout the soles of your feet. Make it up that it's easy. Softening skin, tendons and connective tissue, and muscles all the way to the bone. Have the feeling that you're letting go of tension effortlessly on each exhalation. As mind wanders, be sweet to your mind and just gently bring it back to softening the soles of the feet further and further and further. As these areas of the body soften, the thinking mind slows down and meditation becomes naturally easier. So as you're continuing to soften the soles of your feet, now please do the same thing with the palms of your hands. Allow though your elbows to hang right at your sides so that your hands and arms neither push you backwards nor pull you forwards. They're hanging at 90 degree angles at your side. Soles and palms naturally softening like you're opening imaginary fists with your imagination. Making it up that it's easy. The 
breath is flowing like water. It's coming in deeply and it's going out slowly. The creative power of life itself is breathing your body and you are the witness. On the next inhale, feel your awareness rising effortlessly to the region of your physical head. Here you're softening the four corners of your eyes, the inside as well as the outside corners, melting effortlessly like butter on a hot day. Letting go. And as you're softening the four corners of your eyes, allowing them to soften, also softening the region inside and around your ears. Again, make it up that it's easy. Let go of being perfect at this. Just have the intention. Energy follows intention. Letting your tongue come deeply to rest in the floor of your mouth, softening your tongue from end to end. As you also simultaneously soften all the little muscles that run throughout the pelvic floor, groin region, sphincter, PC muscle, letting go, letting go, letting go, letting go. As these points of the body, these six points of softening, soften further, the thought stream slows down naturally. On your next inhale, feel naturally, have the feeling playfully that your awareness is expanded just a bit wider than your physical body. And again, playfully softening all six points at the same time infinitely softer, noticing what that feels like. It may be very subtle or very strong as you soften more deeply soles of the feet, palms of the hands, corners of the eyes, region inside and around the ears, tongue, pelvic floor groin region, letting go, letting go. Letting go. Once again, feel the breath physically moving through your body particularly noticing on the inhales where at last is physically able to be felt. Three to five finger widths inside the center of your chest in a region that yogis call 
the cave of the heart. Let your in-breath orient you here. Draw your attention, breath by breath, deeper into this very powerful region. While it is orienting inside the physical body, it transcends the physical body. In this region, see, feel, or imagine infinite blackness. The blackness of the womb, the cosmic womb, prior to any forms or beings. An infinite, pregnant void, possible of any creation and all creation infinite blackness in all directions. Thoughts dissolve here. Body sensations dissolve here. Tension dissolves here. With each breath, each exhalation, your whole being comes deeper to rest and at peace in this pregnant, empty void. Prior to creation. Further softening soles, palms, eyes, ears, tongue, pelvic floor, groin region carries you always deeper into effortless meditation. As thoughts arise, allow this empty void, this pregnant emptiness prior to creation to receive the energy of thought and dissolve it back into pure possibility. In this infinite blackness, you sense the tiniest wave, so subtle, it's almost imperceivable, this tiniest wave of the beginnings of movement in this deep stillness.
and it begins to emerge as the feeling of light. The first expression of the force of creation into form in the center of your own heart cave. The stirring grows and this light becomes a thumb-sized flame. So still, so pristine. If you're feeling at all visual, it tends to be the color of a young lightning flash. Bluish, goldish, silvery white. Something deep in your awareness suspects that you are this flame of creative energy. As you inhale, silently you mingle the breath with the long sound of so. The inhalation of so mingles with this thumb-sized, unmoving flame. Pauses in a deep rest at the end of the inhale and then expresses in all directions as a shimmer of love as you silently repeat the long sound of hung internally. It sounds like hung as in I hung up the clothes to dry. Inhaling so into the thumb-sized flame. From the flame emerges the long sound hung. The power in these syllables dissolving all sense of separation from the very source of creation within you as you Inhaling so internally and silently reverberating. Silently exhaling the hung. The force in this mantra dissolving all sense of separation from the source of creation the source of love itself within you. As your meditation goes deeper, you will find a space expanding between so and hung, between inhale and exhale. Rest as long in that deep stillness as is comfortable until the next breath arises. If the mantra dissolves and you're in deep meditation, be there. When mind returns, come back to inhaling so, exhaling hung, softening souls, palms, eyes, ears, tongue, pelvic floor, groin region. We'll meditate in this way.
if you're still repeating the mantra, complete the repetition you're on. Never stop in the middle. And simply rest now with your eyes closed. Notice your experience. Notice how you're feeling about your experience. Now take three deep breaths to signal a transition, letting the very last thing you do be the opening of your eyes only when you feel truly ready. And if you're not ready, stay within. Enjoy. When you open your eyes, See if you can continue to rest behind the mind without becoming any particular person. The biggest burden in life is trying to be a particular person that you have to then defend, protect, remember, believe things about. And it's not required. In certain cases, we play a role, but internally, for some of you, it's ready, it's time to take a deeper leap in recognizing yourself as timeless, boundless awareness. It's timeless. It's not broken up by the made up intervals of so-called time which operate differently in different parts of the multiverse, I'm told. It's not bound by any so-called structures. It's boundless. We've come under like a hypnosis where it seems that we are only these particular people by the name they call you, the gender you associate with, the height, the age, the bank balance. Through language, the power of letters and words, matrika shakti in Sanskrit, the power of letters and words, all these definitions begin to take and shape timeless, boundless awareness into a very small point. It's not bad or wrong. It seems to be part of how this one unbroken source of creation plays and explores itself. Maybe it's like hide and go seek. Kids playing, make believe for the sake of finding oneself all over again. So once again, with all of my heart, with deepest respect and so much love to all corners of the globe that are here, welcome to this very special gathering on solstice. You know, typically in whatever time zone I might find this body, I would generally practice solstice practices in so-called night. And I, I giggle a little bit inside about that, even just saying it out loud now, because my internal awareness is, yes, but it's always night somewhere. It's always night somewhere. You know, there are certain tantric practices, certain deities to work with, energetic mantras that are best done at certain times of day. Well, what happens if you're not available at that time of day? Are you precluded? Well, the traditions and the teachings and lineages that I continue to be empowered by and receive say, no, not a problem, not a problem. 
Because from the perspective of non-duality, everything is already here. Now, let's just touch on that a little bit because there's often a lot of confusion and even, would you believe, weaponizing of spiritual teachings? I know nobody here has ever weaponized a spiritual teaching to be right with their partner, right? You can giggle a little bit because that's kind of funny. When we get reactive, it's amazing what can come out of our mouths when our ego needs to get its way. That incessant talking in the head. So non-duality is one of those things that's been weaponized for the sake of branding and marketing and money and who knows what else, power and control, and often misunderstood by those who aren't really tasting it and simply conceptualizing it. And I'm not claiming to have the end of the experience on non-duality. I'm not claiming the end of the experience on anything. I think that would be actually silly and uh, inviting problems. A diamond doesn't need to proclaim its own value. Self-evident. The sun doesn't need to proclaim its own value. You know, have you ever woken up in the morning and the sun says, hey, you over there, look at me. My God, don't you know how special I am? Not once. Not once. And yet, aren't we mesmerized by sunsets and sunrises, drawn into a deep stillness? So the true powers of existence become more noticeable the more we relax. So in my experience of decades of inner work, long apprenticeships and supporting other people to grow. If there was only one thing that I see makes the biggest difference in growth, healing, locally with the body, digesting food, resting, having better relationships, it's spotting and dissolving tension to the best of your ability, within your circumstances. You know, I haven't forgotten about non-duality. We're gonna get there, but this, this is important. Because otherwise, if we don't really get deeper into the relaxation, ordinary mind is grasping. It's looking for more concepts to hold on to and then conceptualize and talk to itself about. And it's just more chatter, noise, and enervation in an already enervated nervous system. So I like to teach what I call the six points of softening over the years. You might prefer, some of you have done lots of other things, might prefer what we call a body scan, sweeping up and down the body, spotting any holding or subtle grasping, breathing into it and letting go on the exhales. I prefer to begin with the six points of softening. I find it easy, elegant, and simple. Soles of the feet and palms of the hands. These work well in pairs. This is how I help people to remember them often. Soles and palms, that's your first pair. And you can be softening them now. The more you practice, the easier it is to wire it in. Tension is just a learning pattern. We can unlearn that, but we must practice. So softening soles and palms like you're opening imaginary fists with your mind. And if that at all seems difficult, physically make a fist, tense something, and then soften. Corners of the eyes and region of the ears is the second pair. And then the third pair, tongue as it rests deeply in the floor of the mouth and all the muscles of the pelvic floor groin region. Done collectively, the things you seek you can know within. As the ordinary mind backs up, you know, somebody just put in the chat with all caps, rather demanding, 
please speak of the solstice history. We know how to meditate. Well, not everyone here does. And in this wide, wide gathering, we're working with all levels of awareness and experience. If you want the history of solstice, you can look that up. I can't guarantee that what you find is the ultimate truth. And said with love, so what? So what if you gather the histories that some person, probably just a man, wrote about solstice? What I care about is our ability to meet the moment we're in rather than the history. The moments we're in, we're in these inflection points on the planet right now and in our own lives. There's so much uncertainty. There's so much uncertainty. I don't know about you, I've got a lot of practice under my belt. I do therapy every week for years and so many other practices. I've got a lot of tools. This is not bragging, this is just facts. And I can still get pulled. If I spend too much time, if I swipe left on my iPhone to where it shows the so-called news, the bad news, curiosity can get the better of me. And the next thing you know, I notice tension in my body. I notice tension in my thoughts. I notice worry and grasping. So our ability to soften tension is not to be underestimated. Not to be underestimated. Once we start to get a handle on the softening, then it's easier to play with the breath. People have gotten to know me, a lot of you, through the world through my ecstatic breathwork course. It's a very strong form of breathing through the mouth rhythmic. It's kind of de rigueur at the moment, these kinds of breathing. Almost like a one-size-fits-all, which it's not. And yet, some of the subtlest forms of breathing can be the most profound openings. To breathe fully without strain, to notice how just simply you right now slowing radically your exhales, the more the exhales slow down, the more ordinary mind slows down, and much to your surprise, even if you consider yourself so-called new at inner work, you slip behind the mind. You may begin to have deeper experiences of being an awareness much greater than a particular person or time or place. So the topic of our satsang, thriving with shadow and light, invites inquiry. What do I mean, you at your seat, not me? What do you think, what do you associate with shadow? Is that the truth? Is that all there is about it? And with light, what if they're both expressions of one thing and you can experience this directly? I don't know about you, but when I was little, I was afraid of the dark. I think many kids are. And so this meditation, when I first was brought into the shock of blackness in the deep heart, the first thing that came up for me was a tremor that felt like a light version of fear. Tension, really. That I, I was surprised by and decided to meet. Something was afraid of annihilation. And yet... Here we still are. So I really like the pointing out instruction of the womb. Within the womb space is darkness, but it's not a problematic darkness. There's no evil. It's simply 
like a seed in the earth germinating. There's darkness in there, but it's a, it's a nutrient-dense darkness. It's infinite possibility. I know we have this language about shadow work. More and more people, probably many of you are conversant with or heard that term. Maybe you teach it. Those who really understand shadow work or parts work, as I prefer to call it, know that it's just simply pockets of bound energy. That's it. The same creative energy that creates worlds, simply frozen and bound most often held in parts of the body, manifesting as degrees of tension. So while it might sound simple or boring to the mind that enjoys complexity, result, spotting a dissolving tension is one of the most simple, elegant ways to grow. Because the seed of light within you knows what to do. It doesn't need instruction. Love doesn't need instructions. Pure love doesn't need instructions. Truth doesn't need instructions. Creative power doesn't need instructions. It knows what to do when we remove the tension of grasping, clinging, and chasing, which are simply based on our prior conditioning. What do I mean our prior conditioning? Each one of us here that I can tell has a body and has some sort of a temporary past. We had parents. Most of us didn't have parents who were enlightened. In fact, many of us had parents who were barely beyond being children themselves when they had children on purpose or accidentally. I slipped in in between modes of birth control. Apparently very assertive Capricorn, determined to be here no matter what. My parents were in their early 20s. My goodness, their brain is still developing. Frontal cortex isn't finished developing until close to 30, as I understand it from the medical journal. So I was imprinted by these people who grew up the way they grew up with the circumstances and conditions of being born into families that had been fighting in World War II. Can you imagine it was predominantly the men in my family that were in the wars, but not only. These people in our, in our history, not very long ago, that saw things you wouldn't wish an enemy to bear witness to. And God bless anybody here who's currently bearing witness to these things where you are. May you feel lifted by the hand of grace in ways you couldn't even expect. May you feel guided in all ways that are beneficial. And may your being guided be a light to all beings simply by existing. So we have this conditioning from our past, whatever the people in our lineages have gone through, just by having these bodies. So pure consciousness, one pure consciousness, has entered into form, these bodies. And so like light being refracted through a prism, it begins to express in specific ways rather than have all of its bandwidth. And so one simple way to contextualize this is to say it's forms of tension. If we don't see tension as bad, there's also creative tension, you see. Refracted, formed, and shaped by tension and taking this temporary form as whatever they call you. And so relaxing tension is a way to thrive within shadow and light. Within shadow and light. No matter what we're doing, as long as your breathing apparatus is functional, you can lengthen your exhales and soften the six points. And then this mantra, if it's new to you that I gave, is empowered. What does that mean? Sanskrit mantras, 
in particular, not just Sanskrit, also other vibrational languages like Aramaic, Hebrew, Tibetan, and several others. The word is the sound form of the thing, is the goal. It's not a request, it's the actual presence of the goal. So, so hung or hung sa, I'll write it in the chat so you can see it, those of you who are on the live, and for those of you at a later now, I'll write it in the comment box. So hum or hung sa. Depending on whether you inhale first or exhale first. If you were to translate this, simply means I am that. And that is with a capital T. What that? The creative power that's currently manifesting as everything. One of the greatest writings, teachings, downloads, energetic downloads from the Middle Ages, the Pratyabhigna Hridayam, 20 sutras on how consciousness manifested in all these forms, forgot its true nature, got lost, and how it can remember itself and release its bound nature, release its tension into recognizing its freedom. Sutra 1, Chittihi Swatantra Vishvasa Dehetuhu. Sutra 2, Swachaya Swabito Vishvamon Milyati. One consciousness, one power is currently manifesting as all of this without depleting any of her original energy. We refer to this power as a she, even though she is inseparable from the ground of being, which we call a he. We have Shakti and Shiva. Other traditions use different names. That's totally cool. So it expresses as all these forms, my hand, your ears, your eyeglasses, your garden, the weather. One awareness right now is literally listening through all ears at the same time. It's the same consciousness. Let yourself just explore that creatively, sensing into that, not thinking into that, but begin to sense it. The same awareness is looking out of all pairs of eyes right now peering out of all pairs of eyes. Touch it and let it go. Don't try and hold on to it. Just touch it lightly and let it go. This is called a dharana, a centering technique, a way, a creative way in the ordinary moments of life to be orienting into this creative power of source and then progressively recognizing aham brahmasmi, I am that source. Tatvamasi, so is everything, so are you. This is true service in the world. This is true service in the world. Every action we take is threaded with our inner state. That is what determines the fruit of the action. The inner state at the moment we're taking the action is shaping and directing the result. This is how it is possible that one sage, by sitting by herself, completely immersed deeply in the profound integration of her true nature, that energy extends in the field far beyond her mountain cave. And if she has the karma to go down into the marketplace and feed the hungry, take out the garbage, that same state is threaded through whatever task she is doing. Your inner state is your offering, not your actions. It's lovely if you are in the position to be writing big checks or even small checks that help people. That's wonderful. But before you do, touch the deepest place of love within you as you sign your name on that check, as you put the stamp, as you put it in the post box. If you're going to pray for somebody or a group of somebody's or a region of this world or the earth itself, rather than pray asking from a place of worry and tension, projecting more of that into the world, Ask yourself, what would it feel like if the prayer was already answered 
Use your creative imagination to run that feeling of the prayer already fulfilled through your body and see, feel, imagine that manifesting. And let every breath empower it. Let every mantra empower it. What we focus on, we get more of. It's so easy with these ordinary minds that we've got so much practice with, thinking that we're separate, that we have to do physical actions to transform consciousness in the world. But just imagine for a moment, if 51% of the human beings alive today were to recognize the presence of love within as their very own true nature and release 20% more tension from their bodies, what would it be like to walk around your street your town, your state. How much more energy would be available for creative solutions to climate issues, climate refugees, war, economic instability, so much more. Just think about yourself. When you're tense <clears throat> and in tension and feeding tension, how creatively open are you? to seeing what you haven't seen, to seeing possible solutions. So my friends, the invitation is to freshly deepen into the practices, the practices you have that work and any practices you receive here that could be beneficial to growing this. To be the change we wish to see in the world, not to come from a place of asking something we think is separate to intervene, from a place of worried tension. Is this making sense? If you have questions about what I'm talking about, please place them into the chat box, those of you who are here live. Those of you watching it later now, you can put your questions into the comment box below the video, and I'll do my best to get them as soon as I can. Let your questions be questions that can benefit as many of us as possible. If it's overtly really specific to your unique situation, and really personal, that's better saved for a private session. We're in a dialogue together, even if you aren't speaking. This is a dialogue, and dialogue means to discover together, not to already know. I'm sharing some things that I recognize as true as an invitation to your creative intelligence that's not just yours, that's universal, to freshly birth, birth itself through all of us. This is a discovery together. A discovery together. If you have to leave early and you're here in the in in the live, totally understand. You can catch up with the recording later. I'm gonna keep going for a little while because there's still significant energy here. There's significant energy here. While we're seeing if there's any questions, so far none in the chat. I'm going to let you know of some opportunities to continue to work together. There's an empowerment. Perhaps you're noticing this, especially those of you who have a robust practice on your own, who've for one reason or another felt the calling to join us today in this global group. There's a magnification. That's one of the benefits of coming together in satsang. It's one of the benefits, the magnification. So coming up, you can watch this recording as often as you like. There's plenty of things on my new YouTube channel that are there for free. Also coming up on New Year's Day, every year, was in person for a long time and then the opportunity to reach more people around the world through online came. So we are offering the Manifesting a Thriving 2024 and Beyond workshop. It's a couple of hours on New Year's Day. It'll start in the morning Pacific time or whatever time it is for you. Now, if you'd like to get that as a gift for free, it comes along with a new course I'm offering. The course is called The Thriving Life blueprint. 
a thriving life blueprint. It's a culmination of decades of practice, training, and teaching and seeing what works. If we can't practicalize these teachings into our lives, we can feel very bipolar, as it were. We can feel like we're on a swing set. I go into my meditation, I feel really exalted, and then I go to my, my creative projects or my work or my parenting or my relationships and I feel stuck. We want to integrate more. We want to integrate more. The Vedas are very clear. They say, if you can't find something in the body, you can't find it anywhere. So part of our work, universal consciousness is already free. Part of our work, our opportunity, the invitation is to integrate it. Bring it down, waking all the way down, not just waking up, waking it back all the way down through the body. So seeing how we perform action how we make choices, how we move through the world, and having tools for becoming more skillful, more effective, more efficient, and more elegant, while we're maintaining our nobility, our nobility. So things that we'll work with, the four levels of listening, learning how to listen in a way that draws genius out of others and ourselves. We'll work with the stages of action. Most of us have at some point in life, or maybe more than once, gotten stuck at one of the stages of action. We get a good idea, but do we, do we follow it through? Do we trust ourselves? Or are we caught in any of our old tension patterns, which are opportunities to heal and to become more awake and grow up more fully emotionally to dissolve those? So at any stage, we can hit obstacles from inspiration to initiating the action to follow through to completion. Completion can be a big one for some of us. What's underneath all of that? Well, one of the things that we'll work with is dissolving unworthiness. Most of us can bump into pockets of unworthiness here and there. And one of the key places this shows up is in the awakening process that the tension patterns of our ego structure can come up as fear of allowing the blessing stream to unfold within us and reveal it is our true nature, that unworthiness. So we'll be working with that. And throughout it, we're going to be working, perhaps you can see over my shoulder, the image of Ganesha. So I teach, I'm oriented predominantly when it comes to spiritual teachings, and it's not the only way or the right way, within the Hindu Tantric system. Kashmir Shaivism and Sri Vidya. This is what I have permission and training to teach and practice for decades. So we'll be working with empowered mantra. We'll be working with two very potent Ganesha mantras. Ganesha is known as the remover of obstacles. The sounds, the seed sounds in these mantras are the power of transformation in sound form. So when you get stuck, you'll have tools. So much is going to unfold through this, and the course is set up in such a way that you can take it at your own pace. That's part of the gift. Prior to this, the last several years, usually when I've given a new course, I film the whole thing in the live sessions and then post it. Well, those end up being long sessions. So this is a new experiment for me to break it up, to pre-record the sessions in smaller chunks so that you have more confidence with your busy lifestyle going, I've got 20 minutes, I'm gonna do that next section. I'm gonna do that half an hour section right there with that meditation. And then you have confidence, you did it, you saw yourself do it, and it gives you the, the impetus, the energy to keep going. And then we're gonna have four live sessions together with me, four group sessions. They'll be on Saturdays, four successive Saturdays, starting on January 20th. All these details are in the landing page for the site. And then once you uh, join the course, you'll have the dates, you'll get Zoom links and all of this, where I'll lead you, us, into a practice, me too, and then take questions and answers about your experience of the course. And how to unpack it and apply it more deeply within your life and your circumstances. 
The course you own for life, thankfully due to the host platform Kajabi, once you get the product, once you get the course, you can watch it over and over and over again. And if you've worked with me at all before, everything I offer is designed in such a way. Sorry, I just got lit up. I just saw somebody entering with the name D. That was my mother's name who passed away in 2019. So I just felt like a, a little blessing stream, extra blessing stream of D showing up. So whoever D is, God bless you for showing up. I design things to be done over and over and over again, like going around a mala, a rosary of beads. Each time you go around with your mantra, you go back the other way and it goes deeper and deeper and deeper. And that's working with these course materials and these practices. Somebody's asking the specific dates. There, there are four successive Saturdays, just to say that again. Val, would you put that in the chat? Starting with January 20th. Four Saturdays in a row. You don't have to be there live to experience those sessions. The, the recordings will all be put in your library, in your course library. So if you can't be there and you're going to have questions, you'll be able to write in in advance and send those questions. So you're fully included wherever you are. Fully included. <clears throat> I'm getting asked a lot on the chat about the image behind me. This is called a yantra. A yantra is to is geometrically to energy what mantra is to sound they're all working with the same force so a yantra there's so much that can be said and i'm going to say a little bit about it so if you want a deep dive you can actually look it up on your own time someday we'll give a course on it this is called shri yantra so what it's depicting in the very, very center, you can't quite see it as a downward facing triangle. And in the center of that is a small point. That's the one before it becomes the many. And then it extrapolates itself out into all forms, all forms, forms that we can see, forms that we can't see. In this contextualization, 36 principles of creation, the one becoming many. And it shows the pathway back to recognizing ourselves as the one. There's a lot more that can be said. It's highly encoded. There's lots to it. But just being with it has its own energy and emanation. So I don't, let's see if there's any questions. Do, 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 do. With deep relaxation, so we have comments. With deep relaxation comes clarity. It continues to deepen. That's right. So somebody says, I'd love to hear one thought you have about transforming through this practice. Um, please be more specific. I'm not sure what you're asking. Because I have lots of thoughts about transformation through these practices. I should say lots of experiences. I'm not so interested in my own thoughts anymore. I'm more interested in direct experience. And it's fine if you're very interested in thoughts, uh, but direct experience for me is the real thing. I can think about dinner all I want, but eating it is gonna satisfy the needs of hunger. I hope that makes sense. Okay, it doesn't seem like there's any other questions. So let's just take a moment to touch briefly so hung once again. Is the, really, this is it. The grace is within you. Grace is the power that makes the impossible possible. I don't own it. So you're just breathing, eyes open or eyes closed, into the center of the heart cave, three to five finger widths inside the center of your chest, letting go on the exhale. Soften soles of the feet, palms of the hands, corners of the eyes, region of the ears, tongue and pelvic floor groin region. Inhaling into the heart cave, knowing that the light of consciousness, the light of grace, the light of protection, the light of guidance is right there. Even if you're seeing it for the first time, it's there. And as you exhale, it just gently expands through your whole system like warm honey spreading through a white cloth, inhaling into the center of the chest on a sound, so, exhale. 
exhaling, it releases itself, expresses itself. Hung. Take a few breaths in this way. the repetition of the mantra you're on and we're going to seal this practice and you can continue practicing after we complete the zoom for sure as long as you're called and if you're feeling the calling and you can sit a little longer work with it and then touch it again pick it back up later today or tonight and tomorrow you have a full practice here that does teach you letting go dissolving unworthiness and being guided by grace from within. So inhale freshly into the deep heart and then let go on the exhale. Breathe into the deep heart. feel loved. And may the fruits of our inner work uplift all beings as well as the earth. May it be so, and so it is. I love you. You have no vote in the matter. I hope to see you again and again and again. Enjoy yourself. Keep your practice strong. It benefits everybody, most especially including you and those closest to you. Keep your practice strong. And happy holidays. May you thrive fully in all forms of shadow and light.